I just wanted to make a video of five quick tips on light burn which has helped me out over the time so first one is masking an image to cut away the background so you can do it with a square control and click oh make sure you're on your select tool and control and click the image and then when you right click or oh, you'll see it's not there at the moment so it's because the image and the square are both on the zero layer if I make this square layer one and now do that you see apply mask to image and that will cut the image off like that but better than that really is if you need it uh, let me just delete that you can do the same with a pen tool so if you really need to you know cut something close you could just I'll, I'll just do this quickly just to show you for instance but if you really wanted to cut close to something you can do it with this just draw it out with a pen tool wherever you want so now you've got that path you control and click apply mask and now you've masked the whole thing out and even if you want it more accurate you could come down to the nodes tool and then insert a node and you know bring this down or insert another one press s to and bring it up and another thing is if you're not familiar with the like uh hotkeys for this like d for delete s to smooth out the line if you hover over the node tool keep your mouse there and you'll see it pops up exactly what each letter does yeah that way you can mask anything so I found that handy over the time so I just wanted to show that for one of them uh, I'm just going to delete that the next one is the scan angle I didn't know about this until kind of recently I, I hadn't messed with it but this when you open up the layer when you've got an image on a layer like this you open up the layer and you'll have scan angle down here which when you change it you can see it changes the scan angle of the laser normally I will use zero degrees which would make the laser start from the bottom of the image and work its way up to the top or you can make it 180 and now you can see it's starting from the top and going to the bottom so if I go to a preview oh, if I go to a preview you can see now it's etching down from the top to the bottom so it's nice when you're doing 3D photos or something and you want to run another pass over the top you can run your first pass going up and the second pass coming back down and that works well uh, the next one is cut selected graphics I don't know if this is great for everyone it's good if you're doing inlays or anything like that or if you have a lot of stuff you know if you don't want to cut everything sometimes I'll have like five or six photos on here and I'll uh, you know just w only want to print one at a time so with cut selected graphics it, it'll only cut you know it'll only send to the machine was selected so you can see that's that square if I just click that it'll give me that now if you don't have that on you can see now it's wanting to print that you know print out the whole lot so in situations especially for inlays if you've got something intricate and you don't want to cut it all at once and get all the pieces mixed up you can easily just select three or four pieces at a time print them out and then move them out of the way and I found that a lot easier for the inlays and stuff the next one is uh, again underneath the uh, layer tab is to fill the shapes individually again this can really save some time if you've got something like these two squares and you wanted to print them both out 
Oh, I think I've already got this. So let me just see. Yeah, down the bottom here, look, fill shapes individually. Normally it sets the fill shapes at once. So now if I say print, it's going to take 10 minutes because it's got to go all the way from this one across and back every time. So under the layer settings, you can see there, fill all shapes at once, fill groups together, fill individually. So like that was just 10 minutes. If I say fill individually, now it's only four minutes because it's going to do one first and then the other one after. So that can be a good time saver on some projects. And the last one is another one for the images. If you use an outside program to do the differing on your image, so if your image already looks like, you know, if it's already been divvered, like if you use Image R or Photograb or one of them, it'll already have the differing on it. So you don't need the differing modes in here. So normally, like fresh hold ordered, you can just use pass through. So you just switch on pass through, and now it will use this differing mode, that, which is already on your photo so it's you know only really if you're bringing it in from an outside program I'll see if I've got a photo that's not uh, a lot of mine's already divvered I don't think this one ain't but this was the original picture of it <coughs> if I look at that one now oh, if I put it on the laser first look at it now You can see the differing is done by the program. But if I change that to pass through and now look at it, you can see it don't kind of go right. It does still give you an outline. I think it gives you fresh hold. Let me see. Uh, if I take that off and just have fresh hold. Yep. Yeah. So that pass through will only work if you've used an outside program. But if you do use an outside program, you should definitely switch that on because then it kind of does exactly what you see. <coughs> so, yep, that was my five tips. And all of them have helped me one way or another over the time. So, hopefully, it can help someone else. And thanks for watching. And I'll be back with some other videos soon.